adults sometimes they don't care about the activity. As uh, adults, they say like uh, if they, it's called detention, if it is important for them, they do it. And if not, so they don't do it. A learner's motivation can may vary from day to day, even though from task to task. Uh, here, Nieto identifies sometimes some motivation. The first one, uh, just intrinsic motivation. It varies in three things. The first one, uh, to learn, engage the activity, the pleasure, how they learn it. The second, towards achievement, engage in activity for the satisfaction of doing that one. And the last one, the experience simulation. So, engaging in activity to experience pleasure and sensation. So, if they want to do it. This one is a qualitative uh, research, so um, the researchers just are interested in understanding the meaning of people have constructed. That is how people make sense of their world and the experiences they have in the world. I mean, like, uh, my answers were, uh, were according to the way that they were at that time. My methodology. It was an oral interview that was applied with them. So the participants they were 13 students that were chosen from two different groups. So they were they used to work uh, in the ages were between 25 to 60, and they used to work um, on Fridays. Just my procedures. First, when my questionnaire was designed, I uh, I applied it to the first group. So this questionnaire was applied in during class time from 17 to uh, 20 hours. So it was applied, then uh, the questionnaire was in Spanish. They're adults, so they don't, they don't understand at all English. It was designed in Spanish, it was carried out in Spanish. And the questions uh, were in Spanish too. So and finally, the answers were recorded and, and transcribed. Uh, the data collected, recorded, and transcribed from an oral interview uh, the questions, uh, the answers, I mean, that I found here, they were very interesting because they say, like, I'm going to show you which one were my seven questions. So the questions are in Spanish, and the answers that they have in this case, they gave me, so they are in Spanish too. So here we have in this part just eight people, from the other side I have, uh, already have five, uh, eight and five people. So I divide them in uh, group one and group two. So the answers were in Spanish, some of them didn't, uh, didn't answer. My first question was, uh, ¿cuál fue tu primera impresión cuando empezaste a estudiar la preparatoria? That one was the first question. So the answer that they gave, it was really surprised for me because they say like, uh, I'm uh, worried and uh, I don't understand anything, so I don't want to be here. But they were obligated, they were forced to do that one. My second question was, ¿aprender inglés beneficiaría in obtaining a good employer. Most of the students, they say uh, positive answers. Yes, it is. I mean, like, uh, I want to go to the United States and to understand them. So, things like this one. So, the same one, some students didn't answer anything. Some of them answered that it was not necessary to learn uh, English. Uh, the next one. Uh, ¿Cuáles son las ventajas y desventajas si estudiar, si estudiar inglés? Uh, they say, they mention in group one, they say uh, they don't have any advantages. Uh, group B, they mention that it has many advantages to study English. Uh, the four, question number four, ¿Qué opinas acerca del idioma inglés y por qué? Some of them, I mean, they got, it's difficult, they didn't know. Uh, they know how to know to study and it was like a group number two. It was very, or it is very necessary for them to continue to improve it and to have a better job here. Uh, the next one, my question number five. So, ¿cómo te sentiste al inicio de la clase de inglés? This question was very important to answer my question, my third question number one. So, uh, the answers were very, very, I mean, like, uh, uh, interesting, like, uh, scared, uh, so scared. They didn't understand anything. It was difficult. Uh, it was something. Uh, the other one says, like, uh, group number two, uh, it was like uh, he didn't was going to do it well in classes. Uh, some of them, they had taken classes before. And some of them, they didn't answer. Uh, number six, 
¿Cómo te ha parecido la clase de inglés? That one was my question number two that I used to answer my third question number two. So uh, they say good, interesting, uh, like uh, specific, uh, funny, uh, practical, interesting. Those were their answers. And the last question. This is the last question that helped me to answer my, my third question number two. Like, uh, how, ¿cómo te sientes ahora? So, their answers, they already have finished English level number one. I mean, like, uh, in one month, they have to finish one level. So, I mean, like, uh, four classes. Four classes of two hours, they finish one in uh, one level. So, they already have finished uh, three levels. We have three months. Three months where they say, uh, I feel relaxed. So, not that stress as before. Uh, I'm sure I have the basic. I'm um, uh, relaxed, so they didn't wear scared, so um, things like this one. Finally, my conclusion here to answer those uh, two questions were uh, they, the answers were very interesting. So here it is describing the students' attitudes. First, in the group number one, so I found scared, nervous, difficult, stressed, tense, worried, suffer, strictness. And finally, in the other group, did not do it well, remember the things, not as, uh, not as too difficult, relaxed, and didn't understand. So we have to take into account that they are adults. They work from 7 o'clock to 5 o'clock, and after that one, they were obligated to go to take English classes. I mean, like, uh, that's, uh, those are employees from the government. So uh, many generations have uh, finished, and I didn't notice about this one. And finally, here, after three English level, their, their perceptions toward learning changed a lot. Because uh, my objective was to make like a nice class, so I had to go their attention. And finally, they continued, they were motivated to continue studying English. So, and they, at the, la at the last one, the last time, they say, or they were asked to teach the class in English, not in Spanish, in English, as it was in the first uh, three levels. Finally, here, to answer my question number two, if those perceptions and attitudes already change, my answers are less tense, more relaxed, not as stressed as before, relaxed, and without stress, no more relaxed than at the beginning because we didn't know if we could do it, but we keep going. That one was the most interesting answer that I found because it was, uh, it was a guy that says that one, a guy that was 60 years old. Uh, scared of doing it wrong, it is well, so sure to know uh, that we can do it, proud about myself, myself because I'm learning English, a little bit insecure, sure, strong basis, and just the last one, the last person didn't answer this question. Uh, my limitations of the study, it's an open system. So as an open system, uh, Secretary of Education Publica just applied them the exams, so but just once a month. In once a month I have to uh, I have to cover many grammar topics that they were asked. So first three months have already passed since they started taking English classes. At this time it was secretly to apply the interview. I mean like in English number one, so they were so nervous. In English number three, the perceptions already changed. Two, participants had different points of view as they were expressing their feelings and sometimes knew, uh, knew that they were facing on that moment. So, we have to consider one more time that they are adults. Finally, my suggestions for further research. Uh, to do a research on exploring if a student's attitudes change after taking the six English levels, because I have a, I applied the interview with them on the level number three. So what happened with them? If now they already says that they won the English class in, the class, I mean like I chose in English, learning English and Spanish. Uh, suddenly, a research on identify which attitudes ayuntamiento students face after finishing their studies of high school. They just finished English, and that's it, six English levels. But which one are the attitudes that they have after finish the whole, I mean like uh, the whole high school? They are going to take 33 subjects. And finally, to carry out similar projects, but uh, other data collection instruments beside visionaries, uh, could be necessary to apply and have more generalizable results, more complex. And that's it.
Okay. Um, well, my thesis is about the analysis of political speech. You know that nowadays the country is living in a very, very hard uh, situation according to uh, politics. But I think it is a very interesting topic to talk about in many different point, from many different points of view. And in order to start, we're just going to check some remarkable political speeches that um, have been said around the world and in Mexico. Maybe you remember this one? Yep. The one that the General Lázaro Cárdenas gave in 1938. And, well, it was in Mexico, then we moved to Chile. We have Salvador Allende, when giving his last message to the Chilean people in 1973. Later on, this president was assassinated at the Palacio de la Moneda. And what about Che Guevara in Cuba? When he went, when given his speech at the ONU in, the, in, 19, in 1964. And finally, maybe some of our parents remember these ones, the, the one that gave uh, Colosio in 1984 at the Movimiento de la Revolución. So all these politicians, all these um, speakers, use the political speech in order to get to the people, in order to persuade, in order to to uh, catch their attention. And there may be different factors in order to get a vote, in order to, you know, stuff like that. And just going back, now we can go to the topic. My this is topic, well, uh, the purpose of this research is to know more about the political speech, but also about the particular features they use when they talk what they, what, what they do, what they say, how they say it. And in order to go through this research, I had to search for semantics, pragmatics, sociolinguistics. Sociolinguistics, that is the relationship that exists between society and language, how it has been changing, and discourse analysis that we will see later, and critical discourse analysis that this topic goes further in the research. In the case of um, the key terms, there are some terms that must be analyzed when uh, analyzing this speech. And that's the case of discourse markers, that we will see later, metaphor and symbol, a register, and repetition in conversation. Mm, my participants were four politicians obviously from Mexico, and, well, the context of my participants were, uh, the, the data is from um, recordings that were taken in congresses, manifestations, campaigns, and here we have several questions that we will, I will be answer, answering later, but we were going to start with the first one, what is already now? Uh, many people have written uh, about this topic in Spanish, but in the language faculty, this will be one of the newest. And also, this topic has not been explored yet in this uh, faculty. Also, the political speech has been characterized because, mm, you know, there are many different reasons that um, we don't like about politicians, how they speak, how they say the things, and. Well, I am, I'm trying to go further, to, to look what makes the speech very complex. But it's not complex at all. So what do I want to know? I have to research two research questions. The first one is, the first one is what makes a political speech most of the time successful and convincing? Yep. And research question number two, is there a common pattern followed by political speech users when they use it? and when they obviously try to convince people. Well, how did they find that out? I had to use course analysis because it fit my, re my research and also because it gave me the opportunity to look for several um, features that I have already mentioned. The data were recordings from, my, uh, from the politicians, from my participants. Uh, there were eight recordings. Each, each one lasts at least four or five minutes, no more. And my instruments, well, I just had one, 
and they were transcriptions. As, I've, uh, as I have already said, there are eight recordings and I analyzed around 5,000 words. What did they find? This is where we are going to see the results and why they say and how they say it. And I just include a few um, features that they deserve to be explained. And we are going to go with the research question number one, what makes a political speech most of the time so personal and convincing. And guess what? What did I found? What I found is that they use metaphors. For example, La obra pública es la espina dorsal de la administración municipal. When using metaphors, they are trying to, um, you know, this is a way of relating the, and revealing their ideologies. And they already show, um, they also show these course markers. These course markers are very important because they, they, gave, uh, they give an organization in the discourse and some of them were, entonces, bueno, aunque, además, sin embargo, pero. The next feature that I analyzed was register. Register is very, very interesting, and I'm going to tell you why. How many times we have heard the politician to say very strange things that we don't really understand? How many times? What did he say? Okay, here is one. No renuncian a sus privilegios, no renuncian a las enormes Canonías, what is that? Canonías, que tienen desde el gobierno y en sus diferentes responsabilidades públicas. Or, for example, the last one. Es gravísimo que esta soberanía renuncie a esa responsabilidad de discusión, de análisis de las coyunturas políticas. What is coyunturas? What is canonías, demagogía, for example? So, uh, what does these words mean? That is register, the very specific words uh, that a certain person... Uh, thank you. <laughs> um, yes, oh, sorry, I just, I just did last. Um, yes, register is that. For example, in the case of doctors, how many times we have heard doctors without understanding a word? They use very specific words. Well, that's the case in politics. The demagogia. Práctica política consistente en, gan con consistente en ganarse con halagos el favor popular. Canonjía. Empleo de poco trabajo y bastante provecho. Does it sound familiar? Yes. Of course. And finally, coyuntura. Combinación de factores y circunstancias que para la decisión de un asunto importante se presente ante una nación. Well, when I was looking for the meaning of these words, I um, and it is obvious, pretty, pretty obvious that these words come from Latin. Most of the words that I found, they come from Latin. And, well, this is a, uh, an answer that I gave to my research question number one based on what I have already analyzed. Of course, participants are not aware um, about the way they speak. They just want to uh, persu persuade the, the electorate, of course. And what is smart, they may not be able to say, okay, in order to convince people, I mean, to be forceful for, uh, uh, in order to be forceful with the electorate, I'm going to use metaphors. They don't say that. They don't even think. I'm pretty sure that they don't know what a metaphor is. I'm pretty sure that they don't know what register is. So, all these key terms give the political speech the strength, and the strength when it is being performed. And in the case of the research question number two, is there a common pattern followed by all these participants when they are trying to convince people? Yes, it is. And there is one, repetition. They are very repetitive, don't you think so? Yes, they all say the same, the same, the same. Well, repetition is very linked to the fact that they um, make to, want to make a reiteration of what they are saying. Um, well, this, uh, the repetition of the global grammatical structure is called parallelism. And here is one example. The repetition of no es un insulto. We have five, five times, but in the recording it was five, it was about nine times. In a recording of four minutes. Okay? Primero, no es un insulto que haya 7 y medio millones de jóvenes sin acceso a educación pública superior y gratuita de calidad. What a long question is that one. 
No es un insulto que la UNAM, al Politécnico y a las sociedades públicas se les baje el presupuesto. And we can go through the, the rest of the, the examples. But the truth is that the meaning of using these words so many times, of using the same structure, is because the participants exposes a sequence of ideas, but also um, he's trying to reiterate that something is wrong with the, with the with the Congress, with his colleagues. He is also being persuasive, he is also, uh, the intonation is also very important. And, well, what is the significance? So, what am, am I doing this for? Does it have relevance or something like that? Well, in the case, uh, the linguistic analysis of this type of a speech, which helps to understand it, I think if we pay attention to what they say and how they say it, we will be able to understand them in a better way. And to identify features that, may, that many people do not consider when talking about politics. As you, as an electorate, you think that political speech is very boring and repetitive. Yes, it is. But if you look for at least two or, two or three of these key features, you will understand that they have a purpose. Obviously, they have it. Well, and in order to make the features clear, to make features clear in order to make a correct interpretation of the words. I didn't know what was coyuntura. I thought it was something broken or something like that. The coyuntura is very, uh, it's something very different from what I thought. To show there is a reason why political speech is the way it is. That is the significance. And well, thank you very much. Questions. We're going to go to the round of, of questions. So, if you have any questions about any of the topics, it's the time to ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember that this forum is precisely to help. Are you finished with your thesis or you are in the process? Um, I'm finished. Okay. The process is finished. Okay, so probably you. If you provide questions that would make them think of other things to, to finish their research, that would be a good idea. And also, the ones that are already about to start, probably you can get also ideas to get your topic, how you collect data, instruments, etc. So you can, any questions that you can have? Yes. Yeah, I have a question in the other, uh, in the first one. Uh -huh. uh, uh, what are the benefits or the advantages of uh, doing that kind of study in in an open class in the open system, by the way. Yeah, so, uh, Amadeo, Felipe, uh, Amadeo Caraterron, it was in this case the uh, coordinator for Policia Municipal. So, this uh, the last uh, the last year obligates, I mean, like a police, all the kind of police to study high school. Some of them started high school, but they didn't finish. So and the, the purpose is uh, to know that uh, how high school works in Ayuntamiento first to make it easier for them to continue with their studies because remember that they are they don't they don't study because uh, they don't want they study because they are obligated to do it so the first one second um, if they don't study so they are going to lose or lose their job so that's what is going to happen with them. So I mean like uh, just to improve classes, making classes easier for them. So not just English classes, also math classes, biology classes. I mean because they are taking the whole uh, subjects in high school. So they finish high school in uh, two years. So that's the object to make this project. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Yes, ma'am. How do you begin the conversation? Which questions do you use? With politicians. There was no conversation. I mean, I use recordings. So I asked them to give me some recordings they had from campaigns, from participations in the Congress. That's why I mentioned that the context were, uh, that the context was Congresses, manifestations, and um, campaigns. Yes, actually, I never had contact with them, just when I asked them to give me their, their videos. 
I was going to ask the same question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was curious, like, uh, what was the first of all, what was the criteria to select these guys? No? And also, it's for the ones that are thinking of or planning to use any research on these groups analysis. That's like kind of relatively easy, you know. But you can just Google and get your data there: recordings, uh, transcriptions, speeches. So you can do any type of analysis from, from data that is already in the net. But in your case, how, what was the criteria to select these politicians? And how did they provide the information? Well, actually, um, the criteria, uh, there were uh, just women and men, uh, obviously women and men. I didn't focus on age or something like that. But they have participated for many years the conferences, in the um, campaigns from the place where I live. So, okay. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Probably is the the basic question, the basic one, because some of your classmates probably are not clear about how to choose a topic. What can you recommend to your classmates to choose? A good topic. How did you select your topic? Okay, so how I choose my topic? I have been working or I've been working in Ayuntamiento since 2007. So first what I love to do with them is to teach my English class because they are adults, they are police, they are the and they are things like this one. So uh, they are adults, I apply them first uh, things. But some of them, they say like, oh my god, this is for kids, this is not for me. So, and that's why, how I was interested to do like a things, uh, I mean like, a, which one are the attitudes that they have in this case first, at the beginning of uh, English, and then at the end of English. So what happened with them? Because the activities that used, I used to do in my classes, that's why I choose it. Okay, okay so if you can see, always, uh, we select our topic based on, on our context and the things that we are doing, what we have at hand. No? If I want to explore a language of school and kids, do I have access to that? No, they forget about it. <laughs> they, you, you, you need to, uh, to, to start exploring in the context, in your own context, school, social service, um, practical.